Over the past few years, I think we've built the world's best anti-aging protocol. Now the secret to our success has been data. Science begins with counting. I've become the most measured person in human history, and we've measured every part of my body. The problem is getting data costs money. You have to do blood work and imaging and VO2 max tests. It can be very expensive as I found out. So today we're going to give you the same intuitions of why data is valuable. It allows you to know your baseline. It allows you to compare yourself with others your age and older or younger, and it gives you something to use to compare yourself for improvement. So today we're going to give you six tests you can do at home, they're free, and it'll give you a snapshot of your biological age, plus a seventh as a bonus, if you have $20 you can spend. Let's go. Joining me today for the fitness test is my coworker, Lauren, who just joined the Blueprint team and finished her PhD. Lauren, do you wanna come say hi? Hey friends. Yeah. As Brian said, my name is Lauren. I just finished my PhD where I studied single molecule detection using solid state nanopores. Now I'm here with the Blueprint team where I look at the most cutting edge science and research and we bring it all to you at home. Lauren, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Okay. What we're trying to do here is build intuition around the difference between a chronological age and a biological age. A chronological age is the duration you've lived on this earth. Your biological age is a representation of your function. So for example, Lauren is a 30 year old female and for continuous push-ups, average would be eight. Now if Lauren does less than eight push-ups, she's older biologically than her chronological age. If she does more push-ups, she's biologically younger. Let's do it. I'm ready. Now as Lauren does this, she's gonna have her arms uh, about shoulder width apart and she's gonna come down and touch her chest to the top of this tape, and then come back up and be fully extended. That technique is important, of course, because if you don't do a full extension or go all the way down, you might be able to do more push-ups, but it's not truly representative of the actual age test. Okay. Ready? Five, six, Seven, eight, five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. She's crushing this. Thirty one, two. Lauren! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, 40 <laughs> push-ups? Yeah. That was rough. <laughs> How badly my, does that hurt? My chest is on fire. You're burning? Yeah. But it was so Ooh. worth it. That score in the data set, uh, more than 16 push-ups for a female puts you in the excellent category. And Lauren just absolutely blew past that with 40. <laughs> Crushed it. So amazing job. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that would be basically equivalent to be age 18 for your biological age mm -hmm. for continuous push-ups. That's what I wanted to hear. Let's see how I do on the other test. That's a great start. <laughs> All right, next is sit-rise test. What Lauren's going to do is she's going to sit down into her legs being crisscross applesauce and try not to use her knees, forearms, elbows, and then she's going to rise back up. Now, if she uses any of her body parts, including her knees or elbows to either get down or come up, it's minus one point per touch. So if she used her knees and arm, maybe minus two points. You can score 10 points total, minus one for every infraction. Now, if there's any unsteadiness as she goes down, it's minus 0.5. Let's go. All right. Okay. Okay. Like Which a champ, <laughs> 10 out of 10. That was stable. There were no uh, touch points on the ground. So Lauren, again, 10 out of 10. Thank you. So perfect score. <laughs> now it's worth noting, as soon as you try this, you're going to realize just how hard this is. Laura made this look very easy. It's not. And as you age, it gets harder and harder and it shows the basic strength you have in your body to sit down and stand up. So pay attention that as you age, you want to build the muscles that allow you to do this at least to an eight or above. Next up is flexibility, sit and reach. We're going to measure Lauren's flexibility, specifically her hamstrings and lower back. 
Now, flexibility is really important for injury prevention, risk of falling, and overall fitness. In this one, we have a careful setup, which you'll see. And Lauren is going to try to exceed 19 inches to be better than average. She wants to get the biggest number possible. So Lauren, let's see how we do it. Let's set this okay. up. The way we have this set up is we have this measuring tape that is taped here. Uh, this is zero and this is 15 inches. So Lauren is gonna put her feet so she aligns with 15 inches. Then she's gonna keep her legs straight and see how far she can reach. And I'm gonna watch where her finger lands on the tape. This is 19 right here. So you see how far she has to extend to be average. All right, Lauren. Let's try it. Okay. So her feet are on the 15, yep, 15 inch line. And then if she puts her hands out, she can pulse, but she just does have to hold this for a little bit. Mm. Okay, it's good. All right, Lauren got 21 and three quarters. So Lauren, you're three for three, great job. Thanks so much. Okay, next up is eyes closed, one leg stand. We're looking at balance. This is actually a really good predictor of all-cause mortality for people older, 41 and older. You're looking at balance. So what Lauren's going to do, she's gonna choose a foot, take the other foot and wrap it around the side, arms, arms down to the side, and then close her eyes. And she's gonna see how long she can stay upright without falling over. Now, average for her age is 17 seconds. Of course, if she does more, it's better. But she gets three total tries. All right, Lauren, you are three for three in your test so far, maxing out all the ranges. How are you feeling about this test? I'm feeling a little bit good, but let's see. Okay, yeah. so as soon as you're ready and your foot comes up and your eyes closed, I will start the timer. Okay, I'm gonna choose my right leg. Okay. <laughs> 29 seconds. That's great. No. <laughs> 18 seconds. No. So, yeah, well done. So that's number two. So no. in both cases, she was better than average. Do you want to try a third time? Okay. Let's do the left leg. Let's just for fun. Let's see. Okay, let's go. Okay. Maybe my left leg is better. You're gonna break a minute in six seconds. Oh, okay, I lost. 133. That's my non-dominant leg too. I wonder, Amazing yeah, so comeback. Cool. <laughs> 29 seconds, uh, 18, 18 or 19. Yeah. And then a minute 33. Amazing wow, job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So four for four, Lauren is crushing every test. All right, so now check where you should be on this graphic so you have a point of reference when you do the test. All right, next up is reaction time and reflex test. We're going to see Lauren's reaction speed. Now this is really important because as you age, you get slower in responding to things. Now. This is important because it's more pronounced in women than in men, but it creates risk in life. You want a fast reaction time. To do this, we're going to use an app, reaction time and reflex test, and we're going to, going to play a game, Lights Out. So the game, you're gonna see Lauren's finger on screen. Five lights will come on, and her task is remove her finger as fast as possible when the lights go out. She'll get a score, and she'll repeat this trial five times. We're gonna start. Okay. Oh. oh, that's so intense. <laughs> no. Let's try the left hand. Let's see. Better. Wow, oh. best score yet, 0.259. Oh, your score. All right, Lauren, great job. 0.29 was your score. So as you age, reaction time gets longer. All right, next up is waist to height ratio. Now this is important because you're looking at body composition and specifically visceral fat. Many people prefer this over BMI because of the accuracy of the visceral fat. Now we're trying to achieve better than 0.5 ratio. First, let's go over here and get her height. We have here a 60 inch tape. I'm not sure if it's gonna be adequate or not, but Lauren, do you wanna stand over here? Yep. All right, go ahead and come out. Okay. 
Looks like exactly 60 inches. This tape measure was made for me. <laughs> <laughs> and now for, for waist. Now for this measurement, Lauren's gonna wanna have the most narrow point between the ribs and the hip. You'll want to avoid sucking in the stomach and be in a relaxed state. There we go, so it looks like 28.5. Okay. 28 and a half. Let's do some math. Let's do some math. <laughs> and Lauren, your result is 0.48. So again, okay. exceeding the mark. You are six for six. I'm excited, thank you. Now check your score at home on this chart. Now for the final and seventh test is grip strength. Lauren, you're six for six. The average score here is 62 pounds. Off the charts would be 91. Okay. How are you feeling? Not confident, but I'm gonna try. I'm okay. Gonna give it my all. all right. Do you have a technique or an approach? I'm just gonna be angry and. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no! 84. 84 is great. Oh, I wanna break 90. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about three tries here? Okay. We... I wonder if you yelled, you if it would give you additional, like a higher power? score. Okay. The 84. All right. Okay. Oh, 85. Better. A little bit better. 85.4. <laughs> so she's getting very close to breaking through off the chart. Okay. One more time. Oh, oh 96, my God. 85, 84, 85, and 96 off the charts. What a way to end the testing. Wow, I didn't think it could get that high. Yeah, for me, I guess, personally. So you guys, we have to say, Lauren is definitely an exception to the rule. I don't know if I would expect to show up and do all seven tests and be off the charts. Lauren, you really did an amazing job today. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was the last test. It was a bonus because this device costs $20 on Amazon. The others are free to do. So I hope what you learned today is you built some intuition on what biological age means, that you can be chronologically a certain age, but you can function much younger or older. And not to be discouraged, if you get a result you don't like, you can improve. So this is by no means a comprehensive assessment of your health. There are other markers to look at, including blood work and your speed of aging and imaging, but this is just an entry point for you to understand you can baseline your age with a measurement and then systematically work to improve yourself. Now Lauren was a great example today. She was off the charts in almost everything. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Getting your baseline measurements allow you to assess where you're at in life, and then it's the fun game of trying to improve yourself incrementally. 